In today's lecture, we will see the last multiple access protocol, which is the channelization protocols. We will start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to Outcome number 1, we will know the various multiple access protocols and outcome number 2, we will understand frequency division multiple access, time division multiple access and code division multiple access. Let's start the session with the multiple access protocols. We know basically there are 3 multiple access protocols. Number 1, random access protocols. Number 2, controlled access protocols. And number 3, channelization protocols. And we are here in today's lecture. So we will be talking about frequency division multiple axis, time division multiple axis, and code division multiple axis in today's lecture. We will start with what is channelization. Channelization is a multiple access method in which the available bandwidth of a link is shared in terms of time, frequency, or through code between different stations. Why we need this technique? In real time, if there is a common channel and if there are many stations to use that common channel, just like that we can't send the data on the common channel because it leads to collision. In the random access protocol, any station will randomly send the data at any time. It obviously leads to collision and somehow it was handled in the random access protocols. In the next type, that is the controlled access protocol method, we use reservation kind of schemes or polling kind of techniques or token passing kind of stuff in order to handle the collision. And the last method is channelization, where this entire channel, this entire channel means the entire bandwidth of the channel is shared in terms of time or frequency or code. Before going into the frequency division multiple access, let's see what is multiplexing. Multiplexing in computer networking means multiple signals are combined together thus travel simultaneously in a shared medium. So if we have multiple signals, it means multiple stations are sending their signals on a common channel. We are going to combine this together in order to make them travel simultaneously in a shared medium. Why do we need multiplexing? Just sharing the bandwidth. When we have a channel, the entire capacity of the channel in terms of bandwidth is going to be divided to multiple stations. Let's see what are the various multiple access techniques. The first multiple access technique is FDMA, that is frequency division multiple access. Second one is the time division multiple access. And the last one of the session is the code division multiple access. So we have basically FDMA, TDMA and CDMA. Let's start with frequency division multiple access. So in frequency division multiple access, the available bandwidth of the common channel is divided into bands that are separated by God bands. Say for example, if we have a common channel, we are not going to just like that send the data, where this entire bandwidth is going to be divided into bands. Suppose if there are 5 stations, then the entire bandwidth is divided into 5 user bands and each user band is assigned to each station, so that all stations can transmit the data simultaneously. You may ask me a question, what if these two bands are very near? It leads to collision or overlapping. In order to avoid this situation, where each user band is separated by some God bands. We will see the diagram now, it will be more clear. So in this example, this is what the entire bandwidth. Now this entire bandwidth is shared among N station. So we are going to create some N internal channels like channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, up to channel N. Actually this is only one channel and we are going to break this entire channel into some user bands. That is what this. This common channel is divided into some bands and each band is assigned to each station so that each station can transmit their data at the same time. In order to avoid overlapping of channels, we use a God band that is this frequency or this space will not be used and this is obviously wasted because we don't want overlapping of channels. We will see the next point. So the available bandwidth is shared by all stations. The FDMA is a data link layer protocol. Yes, of course. We are talking about media access control. So FDMA is a data link layer protocol, but actually FDM is the technique that is frequency division multiplexing. It's not done at data link layer, it is done only at the physical layer. In terms of protocol, FDMA is actually a data link layer protocol, but actually FDM is used at the physical layer. Because only in the physical layer, the data is transmitted as signals. So FDM at physical layer. We will see an example of FDMA now. Suppose if there are 4 stations, station 1, station 2, station 3 and station 4 and each station is generating the data. 
If you observe, this is the common channel. So we know this is the common channel and this entire bandwidth is broken into some user band. How many stations are participating here? Four. So four bands are created and we also have a God band here in order to protect it from overlapping. All four stations data are being transmitted at the same time. If you observe, this blue color data is generated by station 1, this yellow color is generated by station 2 and this green color data is generated by station 3 and this pink is generated by station 4. This entire bandwidth is used by all stations simultaneously. And this user band is for station 1 and the second user band is for station 2, the third user band is for station 3 and the fourth user band is for station 4. Thus, multiple stations are transmitting their data at the same time without collision and without overlapping of data. Now coming to the next technique that is the time division multiple axis where the bandwidth is just one channel. It means the entire bandwidth at that particular time is given to one station only. So the bandwidth is just one channel that is time shared between different stations. So if we have 10 stations, all 10 stations will not send their data at the same time. Rather, each station will be allotted a time and that time that station will transmit. Let's see it now. So the entire bandwidth is just one channel. It means the full capacity of the channel or the bandwidth is given to one station at that time. After that, it will be given to other stations so that each station will be using this channel in a time shared manner. So stations share the capacity of the channel in time. We will see the diagram. It will be understandable for you. In the previous example, we have seen FDMA. Now we will see TDMA. See, if you observe, this time station 1 is using and the second time that is at this time station 2 is using at the third time or the third second for example station 3 is using and this time station 4 is using the channel. So if you observe not all data are transmitted at the same time in the channel where the time is allotted to every station so that that time each channel will use. The entire channel is given to one station and after transmitting that data, it will be given to the next station and it will be shared. So TDMA is a time shared approach. Let's compare it with FDMA. In FDMA, at the same time, all stations data are transmitted. Whereas in TDMA, at a particular time, only one station will be using the entire bandwidth of the channel. Now let's see the last technique, the CDMA. In CDMA, one channel carries all transmission simultaneously. It means in FDMA, we saw one channel carries all transmissions simultaneously. In TDMA, it used time sharing approach. How does CDMA differ from FDMA and TDMA? CDMA differs from FDMA because one channel occupies the entire bandwidth of the link. Means at one fine point of time, one channel is occupying the entire bandwidth of the link. Then how does it differ from TDMA? It differs from TDMA because all stations can send data simultaneously and there is no time sharing. It means at a particular point of time, everyone's data will be there in the channel. When we see an example, it will be more clear for you. Let's see the example. So in this example, there are four stations, station 1, station 2, station 3 and station 4. As usual, station 1 is generating D1 data, station 2 is generating D2 data, station 3 is generating D3 and station 4 is generating D4 data. Now each station will be having a code. Say C1 is the code for station 1. What this station 1 actually generates is D1 C1. That is C1 is the code. It is applied on the data D1. Similarly, station 2 uses C2 code which is applied on D2. Station 3 uses C3 which is applied on D3 data. And C4 is the code of station 4 which is applied on data D4. And when we see the common channel, all data that is D1 C1 plus D2 C2 plus D3 C3 plus D4 C4 and all the data are conglomerated and sent as a single data over the channel. So here this is multiplexing because where multiple signals are converted into a single signal. So this is multiplexing. No worries, the receiver will use the code in order to retrieve its data. When we talk about this code, actually these codes are based on the coding theory. I'm not going into the details of the coding theory. I'm just going to project only two important properties of these codes. The assigned codes have two properties. If we multiply each code by another, we get zero. And point number two is if we multiply each code by itself and we get four, where four means in this example, the number of stations. We will see an example now. In the example, so D1C1 is the signal of station one, 
D2C2, D3C3 and D2C4, this entire thing when it is multiplied by code 1, that is the code of station 1, we will get the original data D1 and we will also get a number which is 4 and what does this number mean? This number is the number of stations that are involved in the transmission. And that's it guys. I hope now you know the various multiple access protocols and we also know frequency division multiple access, time division multiple access and code division multiple access. I hope you enjoy the session and thank you for watching.